All right. The um, the second thing we uh, a video we should go through is uh, or each successive video that we're doing now is going to be based on a region that we're looking at, an, uh, an organ, an accessory organ, uh, and the histology that's associated with it as we move through these areas that we just described in general in the first video. So uh, we'll be looking at the stomach right now, uh, its gastric pits and gastric glands and the tunic layers or the layers that uh, are going to be found on the inner lining all the way out to the outer surface and the uh, layer of simple squamous mesothelial visceral peritoneum that would be on its surface. Hello. Um, so if we, if we transition from what we're looking at here in the stomach and go to this model, okay, this model represents uh, all layers. Okay, each of the layers uh, or, or tunics um, from the inner lining up here uh, to, the, uh, to the outer portion of it on its surface in the body cavity. So uh, these are the gastric pits, the openings to the gastric pits. These gastric pits are going to have um, uh, an opening at their base and mucous neck cells that funnel the uh, substances being produced here into a gastric gland. There are six different types of cells present uh, in this um, overall lining structure. So as, if we back off a little bit and we look at the, uh, the layers further away, we, this is the mucosa. This is the muscularis mucosa, the reinforcement of that um, structure. And so this from here out is the mucosa lining. Here's the uh, submucosa, the submucosa. You guys, it's really loud. It's mostly magda. Um, the uh, submucosa, and then we move into the layers of muscle, the three layers of muscle that are present uh, for um, churning of the stomach um, here, and that's the muscularis externa. So we have, up here we have mucosa, we have submucosa, we have three layers of muscle, uh, and the three layers of muscle are the muscularis externa, and then we have this, the uh, uh, serous uh, membrane or the simple squamous cells that sit on the surface of this organ, referred to as the visceral peritoneum. So we'll start up here in the mucosa. With the um, gastric mucosa, we find that there are, like I said, six different cell types, and those cell types are, are going to line the tube, this, the uh, alimentary canal, and up here then we have uh, specific uh, columnar cells and, and virtually uh, one goblet cell, a specialized goblet cell for each of these columnar cells prior to moving down into the gastric gland. Uh, these cells uh, would ha be associated with goblet cells that can produce, uh, uh, through unicellular function, a mucus that's alkaline and that buffers against the very low pH due to hydrochloric acid uh, production in the cells below. And so this is a protected columnar cell. There's not a whole lot of absorption that's going on here. Essentially, these gastric glands then lead, or gastric pits lead into the gastric gland below, and the mucous neck cells you see uh, right there stacking at an angle would be those cells that um, are also going to release uh, mucus and help movement of substances from down here up into the pit and prevent uh, damage of cells below by the juices in the, uh, in the stomach. So again, we have columnar cells with goblets that pr are protected um, by alkaline mucus. We have mucus neck cells. Then we move down below and we have a combination of chief cells here that contain pepsinogen and that in the, uh, as pH goes down because of hydrochloric release by parietal cells, you would have chief cell function uh, primarily would be to activate pepsinogen to pepsin and begin protein digestion in the stomach. So these are the chief cells. These larger cells with a circular nucleus would be parietal cells and the parietal cells in response to gastrin release from uh, enteroendocrine cells deep in the pit would actually begin to um, uh, produce hydrochloric acid. So parietals produce the hydrochloric lower pH and activate pepsinogen to pepsin so that we can break down proteins in this location. Down in deep in the pit, as I mentioned, there's going to be a, a, a type of cell that's called an enteroendocrine cell, these, these dark purple cells here. And the enteroendocrine cells are specialized for function uh, of uh, release of hormones primarily. And those hormones would include somatostatin, which is GHIH, uh, endorphins, um, uh, serotonin for muscle contraction, histamine for um, vasodilation, uh, uh, and you would also have um, uh, gastrin, of course, to control the, the functions that we just described above, uh, in addition to CCK and secretin that are released um, 
well, at least secretin. CCK is released in the next area by the, a similar cell, an enteroendocrine cell, uh, and would, would influence a fatty chyme breakdown if it's present. Okay, so the, um, one more time. The cells that we have are simple columnar cells, goblets up here uh, protecting those simple columnar cells. We have mucous neck cells here. We have parietal cells, these larger cells that release hydrochloric. We have chief cells here, which are going to uh, help with the beginning of the digestion of proteins with activation of pepsin. And then we have enterendocrine cells deep in the pit that are involved in the release of all the hormones that are important to, uh, to survive in this digestive process. At the base of the, uh, of the lining of the mucosa here, we have, uh, we have what's referred to as the lamina propria. And the lamina propria would be a two-part um, basement membrane that uh, consists of the basal lamina, where these cells actually sit down on the, onto the uh, surface. Uh, since this is a mucous membrane, uh, we also have underneath that areolar connective tissue that then would connect uh, it to uh, underlying tissue, and that's the reticular lamina, and those two together make the lamina propria. And then a reinforcement exists called the muscularis mucosa uh, for that lining uh, and its stability. Down below the muscularis mucosa, we have the, uh, the submucosa, which is highly vascular, uh, has um, submucosal glands and, and ducts. This is, this is the area where we would modify and help enhance the functions in the gastric pits uh, with Brunner's glands, for example, as, as the chyme leaves the stomach. Uh, and then under the submucosa, we have three layers, the uh, oblique layer that's been added here for churning of the stomach. Then we have the middle layer, which is this circular layer. And we have the uh, outer layer, which is the longitudinal layer, and those three muscle layers make up the muscularis externa. And on the outer surface of these muscle layers, we would find the, the serous level. Now, in between these, you'd have three nerve plexes that branch from the vagus nerve. So here we would have submucosal plexus of nerves from vagus that does all of this through parasympathetic outflow. We would have in between the two layers here in the muscularis externa, the myenteric plexus right here in between longitudinal and circular, and then we would have the sub plexus of nerves also from the vagus uh, in the, uh, beneath the layers of muscle.